Doctor, you mentioned that there's some countries that have high levels of natural yes. fluoride. Um, where does that come from? And even in the United States, we can get uh, exposed to fluoride in a lot of other places than yes. just water and, and oral health products. Yeah, there are some pockets, even in the United States, of high levels. I mentioned Texas yeah. and Colorado and so on. So yes, there are a few million people that are drinking high levels of fluoride in the water in the United States. But literally millions, this is coming from the rocks. I mean, mm. there's some, some parts where the fluoride ores, minerals, are close mm -hmm. to the surface and the water coming from their wells is, contains a lot of fluoride. There's no fluoride in, in the rain. So if you're drinking surface water, it's going to be low. But it's, your groundwater may or may not contain fluoride, depending on how much fluoride is deposited in your local rocks and so on. Mm -hmm. But then you can, you're, you're right in the sense there are other sources of fluoride. Some natural f foods have a lot of fluoride, like tea. Any food with bones in it, fish bones, high fluoride, mechanically to bone meat, if the, that's where the fluoride concentrates in animals and in, in humans. And then you have pesticides. A lot of pesticides contain fluoride and, and fertilizers. The, the chemical that we use for fluoridation actually comes from the phosphate fertilizer industry. So when they take the phosphate rock and treat it with sulfuric acid to make soluble phosphate, in the process they drive off two very toxic gases, hydrogen fluoride and silicon tetrafluoride, because there's a lot of calcium fluoride with the calcium phosphate. And um, for years, that, that, those two very toxic gases decimated the the vegetation, the citrus groves in Florida, mm. crippled cattle and so on. Eventually, they had to put scrubbers on. And a spray of water converts these gases into hexafluorosilicic acid. And that's the chemical, either in its pure form or its uh, sodium salt, which is used in 90% of the fluoridation schemes in the United States. Now, the irony is this stuff is, is very toxic and it's contaminated. It has all kinds of things, arsenic, lead, even radioactive isotope. They can't dump this into the sea by international law. They can't dump it locally because it's too concentrated. To get rid of it as a hazardous waste, which is what it is, would cost an arm and a leg. But if someone buys a hazardous waste from industry, it becomes a product. So the very fact that the public water departments are willing to buy this stuff makes it into a product, mm -hmm. and then they can they use it. It's incredible, absolutely incredible. One of the things I should say before we get into the toxicity of the fluoride chemicals themselves, one of the contaminants is arsenic. Now, there's no safe level for arsenic as far as the EPA is concerned because it's a human carcinogen. Mm -hmm. Any level can cause cancer. So one of the things that we can say is that inevitably, by using these industrial grade chemicals instead of pharmaceutical grade as they use in toothpaste, et cetera, you are inevitably increasing the cancer rates in the United States. We can argue about how big or small that increase is going to be, but you can't argue against the fact that you're knowingly adding arsenic, knowingly increasing cancer rates. And we do have some evidence that fluoride itself is carcinogenic. 